So today's topic is about Gaggle to understand the Gaggle build tool as a dependency tool. What do you know about the Gaggle? We are already using in our project the Gaggle. Previously, also we have used the Gaggle, and some of us also use the Maven as well, right? So Gaggle is what? If you wanted to identify what is a Gaggle, it's basically a build tool. An automation tool, what it automates is basically automates the, the project build process and the deployment of that particular project into a form of a jar or a PR. And also, it automates the publishing of that particular data repository or the project artifacts into a repository. Okay. And this is is uh, based for JVM ecosystem, but we will find that this is also being used in other languages as well. It is written in Java and also it's like open source Python. Uh, open source with the Apache license tool. So in data build tool, we are already previously have used with uh, Java in Ruby, Scala, or Kotlin, along with the Java languages we can use. We can use also Gradle into the native ecosystem that is for development of C, C++, as well as Swift projects, which creates a native binary. And also, we can use the Gradle mostly to Android application development as well. And it can also be used in miscellaneous other languages like Python, Go, or for documentation as it does. So, Let's understand what a build tool does. How the particular Java application we can practice. So initially, what we need to do is we need to create Java application as a jar file. So for that, what we need to do, we need to just compile. And when you compile, all the class files are basically with a output directory, it put in it. O option and all the class paths can be put into there. If my Java application has a dependency on another project, so I have to build the previous project and then I create the corresponding classes. And from the classes, I can use Java jar. I create a jar file. And if I need to run that particular my application, say project two, so depending on project one. So first, I created the jar file. And then the, for the particular jar files, what happened is I have to put that particular jar file into the lib directory, right? And I need to manage everything for that if I don't use any kind of build tool. Then comes a build tool, but for example, the build tool example like make. So this particular build tool is does only build process, build and package process. So instead of me you know, typing those command, and if I have like a dependency command to be run, uh, the make tool is let us do is to get group together commands and it let us run that particular command. And those commands are automatically, you know, do the same steps as within the Java, compiling the Java application, creating the jar file, putting the jar file into the lib directory, and it's, And those build tools, the initial build tools, are doesn't have the dependency management. So you have to write steps where to place the jar file into the lib directory. And you have to download the jar file from some project website, or I mean, a public website or private website, internet site. You have to download that. And you have to place those jar files into your along with the source folder in a lib directory. 
So all the different I see, if need to be updated, then that particular dependency need to be again downloaded all the places manually with that particular build tool. And then the jar files also saved as a part of the code commit along with the source code. Okay. That's where we have from the manual process to evolve to the build tool. And from the build tool, so how we can you know have that particular code be present and how the code can be shared code can be shared either in a binary format or code can be shared as a source file so we can have like a source.g folder or we can have like a binary folder which is in binary.g so what is the benefit of each other? If you just you know publish your source as it is, so often it's maybe most reliable because you are already getting the up to date code, but you cannot change the particular source code, whatever the particular zip code has SRC that G, we cannot modify that. We cannot maintain different version of it, and it is hard to change. And obviously, if you download the source file, you have to first compile that. So obviously the compilation overhead need to be there. In comparison with the binary, what they have is they are like a bean or jar file, whatever there. They're pre-built, so you don't have to build that. You have to trust the person or the organization who is providing that particular jar file, but it doesn't have any kind of a metadata. As the over period of time Java ecosystem has evolved or exploded. There are many organizations and individuals has written the libraries which they have distributed the jar files which you can use as our source code. So mostly the libraries are available as a binance. Now then comes your IV and Maven. So we can use um, IV and Maven, they both can provide dependency management. Where the libraries are having version like 1.0.2 or semantic version number they follows they are published to repository along with the metadata okay and transitive dependency for example i am dependent on a particular library say for example um, dependent on hibernate so hibernate is obviously going to be depending on any kind of third party divers maybe PostgreSQL or JDBC jar, etc. Right? So those are basically known as transitive dependency because in my dependency management, I want to say I am going to be depending on Hibernate. Now this dependent primary tool then go into there and find out what are the dependencies are there for the particular dependency management tool. And they are basically managing the other dependency other transitive dependencies and download them as well so that helps the developer developer doesn't have to explicitly mention each and every dependency that is due. but maven is not maven center means it's only a build tool okay and maven form is basically a metadata model we just type that okay this is my artifact what is the artifact group name? What is the artifact name? What is the artifact version? Okay, etc. Details they provide. Maven Central is basically a repository where this Maven form along with the chart files do decide. Okay, so how we can download the, uh, the dependencies? So it needs to be mentioned from the particular repositories that are there. So Gadel actually when you download, it actually checks from which sources, uh, what is the sources of those repositories from where you can download them. And it also can optimize the down that what we happen in, we know in Gadel has an offline mode, right? So if I resolve the dependency once, the dependencies are stored in a Gadel cache. That you found in Windows, C drive, user, your username, then dot cattle, then there is 
files, tool one, module, then cache, then there are artifacts name, and then within that there are jar file, and then with them there are artifacts. So if that file is particularly downloaded, it's not going to download again. So it as it uses a cache, just like a Maven cache, it going to first check that and it going to try to resolve for it. Okay. And we can have like an offline mode where we can, you know, download that particular content without connecting to the internet also. Now, repositories are important because the order of the repository in which the download need to be completed, that is looked into. And then repositories can also be used to restrict a certain dependency to be downloaded for a certain repository. Okay. And it is possible version that okay we can down to download from the maven local but maven local is not a repository is basically cache from a maven which may have a partial model data and this metadata artifacts are download concurrently so metadata after being resolution the artifacts can be downloaded in parallel also how gradle you know search for dependence Gradle knows from where the artifact comes, so it's look into in the particular order where the repositories are mentioned. And from that particular order, it tries to download. And also, each repository has a hash, SHA1 hash. So, based on that particular hash, is uniquely identify a particular version. It looks up and also looks up its internal cache. To see whether there is a dependency already present that using the similar hash to so look that up. They can also use the Maven local or Maven cache for dependency lookup. And uh, you can change repositories as long as that you are pointing to the same version of the dependency. So you can say switch from Maven Central to JCentral, still your port to execute and you don't need to download the dependency because of the same dependency that is published to both of the repositories that is there so what is the dependency dependency is nothing but a uh, gradle model which has a grouping name and version to identify it. for example here we have the slf 4j where the slf 4j api is there which has a 1.7.2 that is the version now what is configuration configuration is a name set of dependency provide access to resolve module and their artifacts so implementation is there test implementation is there those are the example of the configuration okay so let's see an example we can go through a sample program then we can try to understand our application Gradle as well. So here there are like multiple projects are there. So each of the projects has a build.gradle file. And build.gradle, this is like uh, here there are four or five dependencies are there. We can go over them. So what do you know about this? There is a build.gradle file is present and settings.gradle file is also being present. Normally, when we use a particular Gradle, we know that we can create a, use a Gradle wrapper into our project. So what is a Gradle wrapper does? It creates a binary, executable binary, with which you can execute the Gradle build process into your native format. For example, in Windows, is a .bat file or PS file or PowerScript file. In Linux and other Mac, other system, it is Gradle W file that we created, which we just need to execute that. Then, if you need to provide any kind of settings that we mention into the Gradle settings dot Gradle, for example, here is the project name we can give. That's the project name that's coming over here, and the build dot Gradle is very you know 
we can mention the our plugins. Okay. So here is a particular plugin that is being used. And then there is a different presentation and different names are provided. Now let us go over the sample projects and let's see how the sample projects are defined. So there are four or five different sample projects are there. So let's see the first sample project that is the Git utils. So Git utils has only build dot get. Okay. So the first plugin it is using is the Java plugin and the repository is using is the Maven Center. Now, when I say the dependencies, dependency says implementation. It has a two dependency implementation that is depending on SLF4J, and the one is a JGit dependency. Then there is a test implementation that is used into the compile time that is JUnit Jupyter 5. And test runtime information that is during the test run, it is going to be using ORG SLF 4J, SLF 4J for simple 1.7.2. And there is like a task we say are going to be using JUnit platform or JUnit 5. So if I go into here, hello, sir. Yeah. So I have a question that what is the difference between plugin and dependencies? Plugin is actually used to perform dependent operation. For example, plugin is not actually part of the source code dependency. Rather, it can be used during the build phase of it. Okay. So into our project, we can also find there are like different plugins are there which perform different operation. For example, we see the plugin, say, Java. We see the plugin, say, IDEA. OK. So they basically says that this project is of Java nature, or this project can be open up using IDEA, and then IDEA-related file or the configuration they can manage. OK. So they are not actually part of the distribution, rather they are used to change the behavior of the build of the gradle process. Okay. Now, let us go inside the sample one. Simple one. Okay. So in the simple one, then we're going to go into CD Git Utils. Okay. So now here, how can we run? Let's say Gradle, and then you can say depend in states. Let's see. I have given a wrong game.
so what is the dependency command does is basically look into into your project dependencies and list down those dependencies that's all it does So it has not been built, so it will take some time to get built. Okay, let's see what happened. Okay. So here we can see the dependencies are showing, right? Now, here the dependencies are showing all the dependencies that are there, all the dependencies that I mentioned, both for implementation, both for and here we can see all the transitive dependencies jcraft goal port sl 4 j mouse castle etc so all kind of transitive dependencies are displayed out here then also your unit test case dependencies are displayed out here so is it possible to view these dependencies Let's see. So here we can do is rattle the blue dot back. Let the file. Now we can mention or uh, we can you know move actually CD simple one. Within the simple one, we can have this gradle w gradle w dot back. Here we have a different port. We can say git utils and we can say dependencies. These dependencies are again. Okay. Let's say git utils color dependency. See, we can see the other dependencies. Yes we can see all the dependencies that is displayed out here okay now here some of the dependencies under test implementation some of them under there is no test compile dependencies are there there is test uh runtime class for dependencies are mentioned right for running the test class for what is there and test runtime only dependencies are mentioned similarly here you can see implementation Compile only API is nothing. Compile class path is there. So it says that this is what is a configuration. Compile class path, source set of main. So let me copy the compile class path. Let me rerun the command. See, see, 
configuration then I put compile class path and it says is configuration yeah it's been used configuration I see whether we are able to see that now it's the build is successful now from here what we are getting is we are only getting the compile class path section and these are the dependency under my compile class path section so for compiling the source code, what I require? I require this all dependency. Now, similarly, I can go for paste compile class part. So now from the previous one, what you can find if you compare previous one to this, we have all the dependencies that are from the compile class part then we have the taste dependencies that are there that are coming underneath okay so these two ways we can see and also we can see this dependency has been already omitted because what is gradle find this this dependency is already included somewhere previously like here so when you again go into the param, it's not again included the same dependency or downloaded that. It actually remove that. Okay. So compilation option that we can see, test will require additional dependencies that we have implementation out here. Okay. Now check the other portal LW dot path C line sales. Addition. Why is not we don't know. It's on the simple thing. Which is not with ones. So here we have that as a good or bad. Now, what we need to do is we need to check the CLI dependencies. So let's check uh, here. Let's see. And again, please let me open up this one form. It's not recognizing under that. So let me go back to simple one. And let's just say get rid of load or bad. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to check the dependencies just like before. CLI section. Now, what is the problem with CLI? The CLI is pulling a different Different capture on. Okay. Okay, let us look into that. So CLI is saying that we are using two plugins. One is Java and an application. So it will create a jar file. Then it has dependencies. It's implementation or dependent on project grid util. So that means it's depending on this. And again, again, dependent on another dependency that is mentioned now. As it is an application, so it will be creating an executable chart. So this 
plugin creates an executable chart that you can execute. So when you create the executable chart, what you need to do is we need to actually create the chart that is there, which is this is the main class. So under this source code, we have this main class. And this particular main class is from where we're going to be seeing the outcomes. So when you execute this, this will be executed. But here, what the problem we are facing is that here we have a different Gradle wrapper. And this particular Gradle wrapper is taking a different binary out. And change the binary distribution out here. Let's try to do this. Okay. So now, as you can see, this particular version also uses native projects, but it again failed. So why it is failed now? Is failed because it's not able to finding a class Ruby out here because of the plugin we are using. Most probably, no, no problem. But normally, if we see the dependencies out here, so in the dependencies, we can see. under this particular CLI dependencies, it is coming like this. So if I just try this normal pattern and then CLI, and see if it is works or not. Okay. So anyhow, this dependency works. So what is showing out here that we wanted to see? Here we see all the dependencies that is there now. In the test run, as it depending on the project git.util, it also building in, bringing in everything, right? Bringing in all the dependency of that particular project, right? Similarly, but when you see this compile class path, it's actually dependent on this project and this. But on the runtime, it's showing a different one. So runtime class path is something different. But the implementation is only different, is that for the source, what are the dependent things that are mentioned out here? It is only dependent on these two. But when you actually go into the running the application, then it's going to be resolving the dependency of this git util projects and everything. Okay. And now can you create the executable jar file? We can. Let's see. Rattle. CLI package what is showing is showing that it has a problem with uh, using Ruby. We don't have means Ruby install, so it's not going to work. But anyhow, so if we see what other tasks are there out here. It has a JRuby, etc., etc. It has a build. So we can do the build and we can do the assemble. Right? That is on the sample. We can do it. But it's not showing anything related to. Or if I wanted to open this up, it's not showing me that. So if I try to. Assemble out here. It's also failing because it doesn't have Ruby. Okay, so I don't have Ruby, so it's not working. Anyhow, not an issue. And here we can see all the different dependency also from this view as well. Compile class for the runtime class for test compile class for and test. Runtime class. Okay. That's been there. So now what you can check next. Okay. 
So when we're running the test, there is more dependencies are dependent on running the application. And the, when you're just having implementation, there is a different set and it has like less dependency that is there. Okay. So here we can able to find the, how to see the dependencies are there. Okay. So now here we are using implementation. What is this defined? Is basically we can also use the compile option. But you can choose compile, you can choose test. Okay. But it is advisable to use implementation or test implementation wherever you are using it. So here we see that how can we create one dependency that can be depending on another, etc. Any questions so far? Okay. So there are a few ways we can define this and say implementation where you don't say that where you require it or we can say compile or we can say the compile only. So that means this, that particular dependency are used in compilation time only, or it is implementation time. Then that dependency is included both into the test class path and normal class path, and then your runtime class path. Okay. And here you can also know that here you can you know put additional things right so here you can you know put exclude option what is the exclude option does it exclude option does it is basically exclude certain dependencies that we don't require fine so what time we find that sometime when we are dependency that is coming from the transitive dependency and that particular dependency is already included a higher version of their particular dependency or specific version of that particular dependency is already included out here so what you can do we can exclude that particular dependency out here and then we can use them so when the transitive tree is going to be resolved that particular dependency will be removed from here and the actual dependency will come it from out here. So for example, if we look into so transitive dependencies you can control by using the exclude command that is there. Okay. That is there and anything else we can see. Okay. Here is just like a Kotlin command. When you using Kotlin, then we are using the plugin Kotlin DSL and J Center. Okay. Nothing more out here. So here you can also compile the Kotlin as well. Okay. So that being the sample dependency, let us move to into our project and now understand with this basic knowledge, like how this our project has been using it. So let me open up the ether. Okay. 
so out there into this project we have settings and in settings we are saying that this is our root project name and other two sub project model that is service and service modes are included okay then the gradle properties we are using to define the Kotlin version 1.6.20 okay and the build.gradle is rather different plugins and other things are there so this is a root root of our my dependency right so this dependency file will be included into this two sub project depending on what we try to implement so out here what you are you know doing is we are saying that we're going to be using this plugin that kotlin will be run on the jvm using a certain kotlin version where the kotlin version is coming from its kotlin version is coming from the gradle dot properties so if in maven what you find that we when we define the properties we have to define that inline within that form dot file that is there right so but here what you can do out here is that you can define that into a separate file whatever properties and those properties you can use within your dollar placement right so here you are saying that okay i'm going to be using this dependency from here and this is another plugin i'm going to be use and all open plugin i'm going to be use so all the classes will be open because that is what i required for my unit test cases for mocking etc okay along with that what you are doing is we are doing is we are including jcoco so for test compilation and test percentage we can get from the test coco report similarly for sonar cube for report publishing we are including sonar cube okay and for a specific download library we are using to speed up certain downloading certain files right we are downloading the graphql queries file that is there okay now out of this all of these plugins that we have mentioned out here we are saying the sub projects that means whatever we have defined in the setting dot gradle these two are my sub projects so these two sub projects we're going to be using and we're going to be applying the jvm kpt all open and jcoco out of this flow plugins will be applied and we have already seen the dependency and then in the in the dependency what we have is that we are saying that we're going to use in portland reflect and Kotlin std lib dot jdk8 so standard library of jdk8 and Kotlin reflection both libraries will be the part of the default class path and the run path because they are included as a com not a compile not compile only but as a implementation step so that means whatever we define into the sub path sub projects all the plugins and all the dependencies are by default get merge with that particular dependency so any question till the plugin and sub project section Do you guys have any questions? No, sir. No, sure, sir. Okay. Fine now. So this is this implied there. Now here, if you can go out here and see the build dot gradle, here also you have the gradle properties. You define the different things like what is the graphical version you are using, graphical plugin version you are using, runtime plugin version you are using, JPM version you're using, and Micronaut version you are using. Here you don't have the settings file. Now here, what are the different parts are there? The additional plugins you are including apart from the whatever plugins are there. Here you are mentioning the group and the version. That is the artifact that will be generated that will have this particular group and version. Then you are defining the repositories that you're going to be using. So here you are using Maven Center and you are using also the plugin repository for gradle from gradle or 
you're going to be downloading all the Maven related plugins that are there. Then we are using what we are using out here. We are using Micronaut plugin application. So it will create a Micronaut plugin application. It is there to download the GraphQL schema file. And here you are using another plugin for Micronaut. Then you are saying that this is a Java project. So you are using including that. And then you are also including the Java code generation from the GraphQL using GraphQL Gradle plugin with a Gradle plugin version. Then from that, you are also from your REST API. So you are creating the generator plugin that will be creating your open API code on your Swagger file, it will generate it on your own. And then Linter, they are using this library for linting. And these dependencies are going to be downloaded from here. Now, Myconaut, it says, okay, Myconaut will be using Nati as a runtime. Okay. And then it takes runtime, it's going to use in JUnit 5. Processing will be incrementally and it's going to be using annotations. It's going to look for under Ether, all the annotated means that are there. Now it says that source it, resource directory. So it's showing you what is the resource directory, where it is located. So you need to do this by default, by convention, it is going to be figuring out that what is the source path is, what is the trace resource path is, what is the source resource path is, right? Now, in the project, you have a build directory. Underneath, you have a generated. And there you have resources. And you are saying that, okay, all the GraphQL generated source code will be picked up from there. Source directories will be picked up from there. And the test source directory will be picked up from there. So from the Swagger, whatever, you know, the generated Java classes will be picked up from here. And all your GraphQL Gradle uh, generation files will be picked up from these two locations. Now you are saying that these are the different keypad dependencies, other dependencies from Micronaut, HTTP client management, etc. that you are mentioning out here. And for logging, you are mentioning, OK, I'm going to using logback, log dash, and the runtime only. So you are saying that this will be, I will be using Jackson for Kotlin at the runtime only. And implementation is your Java code generation from GraphQL that you are saying Java client dependencies and test annotation processing that is you are choosing this and test implementation you are choosing from all of those dependencies that are there. Now, from your application, what will be your main application class path that is mentioned, and for the Java plugin, what is saying the code. <laughs> will be based on your Gradle properties. So currently, our source code is JVM 15 compatible. Okay. Then you have this two different tasks for downloading two different Gradle files. One is for Hierarchy query, another is for your path queries. These are the two tasks that we have performed. They have mentioned this is the task of type download. This type download is coming from another plugin that you have seen before. No. Then it's registering where the code generation task will place its source code. What is the package name it will be giving? Okay. And then it's saying that for 
graphql type gate how it's going to be translating into the java type now next is saying that what is schema file filter build directory that is by default the directory it's going to be looking for the schema files because the same build directory where the files have been downloaded then schema file pattern this will be the file pattern that we will be looking into and generation deprecated request response to fox spread utility classes that is there So two different. So these have been tasks have been registered because these tasks are already there as a part of the plugin. And two different packages have been mentioned. In other tasks, you can see the tasks dependencies has been created. So here, if you see under Gradle, there are going to be miscellaneous. They are going to be listed under different miscellaneous or other taxes let's see under other you know seeing these taxes Okay. okay, so separate tasks are given there generate CTK plugin, path plugin. So, path plugin, what you need to do? You need to first download the schema file, so in this order, and you need to also download the hierarchy schema file. Then, you're running the lint local main and test. Similarly, for hierarchy. You are downloading the schema file and then you are depending on this particular task. Okay. And process resource, when you're going to process the resource, that particular phase, you're going to be working on this two dependency. Then comes your portlin. So when you say depends on, means those tasks will be executed first, then your uh, this task related targets will be formed. So one is compile code in, one is compile test code in. A test compile code in required that open API or swagger file generation. And the open API file generation has been mentioned below. So what is basically doing is basically creating a swagger file in this particular path location. Input source is going to take and it's going to be generated the open API directory so uh -huh. Java code for that now here it say open API validate open API validate it taking one particular file path then it's big comment two and then for test it depends on open API validate and open API generate. So those two tasks need to be completed. Then you can rerun the changes. So when you run your test cases, what happens is every time you're making any changes, new endpoint or updating the endpoint, then what happens is your tasks are first executed there. I do always get the method available under swagger api or default and again they are saying that if we need to explicitly mention that we can mention that and run local they have mentioned so run local what they are doing they basically executing a class path source set main runtime class path that you know and then jpm argument they say micronaut environment local and jpm args agent lib 
show exceptions so exception for a full for clause etc if there is a test failure okay and after that what is happened is under finalized by that after doing all of the test run the jcoco test report will be executed and jcoco test report is also dependent on the test so either you wanted to see the jcoco test report or you run the test directly what happen is along with your test result your jcoco code coverage report is also been generated and here it says that how the generation will be xml enable if you want to see the report in html format you can put it in enable lean code in main and test with disabling setting rules that's all that is your whole service get a class and i'm mel so any question on that if not let us also now move to the smoke test so here in the smoke test and what is in the settings just it says the project name is this here we are again using application java open api generation and the kotlin linter here you they have given a particular version and group so the artifact they published will have a certain version and name and it has a main class as well and the application and these are that the repository for the maven etc and maven then it has the source code okay again run time you have this faster xml for kotlin and then you have micronaut kotlin login few source gen c then you have logpad logpad other things and other implementations so all the implementation classes that will be required are mentioned out here those so compatibility is the java version that is 15 so here they are compiling the kotlin that is depending on open api generation and then compile test which is not depend on anything then you have open api generation it is the same option to generate the APIs that are there. The validation the test is dependent on that. Then you have the linting option that is they have disabled. So any question? Have we understood our project cadre file? If no question is there, we can close the session now.